Welcome to Unity Church of El Cajon. My name is Robert Bright. I'm the pastor here. And we want to wish you a very happy Mother's Day. Today, we are celebrating the divine feminine. We are celebrating that nurturing aspect that indwells every human soul. And we're grateful that you are here. We're grateful that you have chosen to spend some time with us in celebrating God's good in our life going to invite you to join me in prayer as we open our service. We give thanks to you, Mother, Father, God. We give thanks to you for your presence that is always with us. We are so grateful for your love and your nurturing aspect that helps us increase our experience of divine love, that helps us increase our health, our prosperity. It helps us increase our connection with you. We are so grateful for this opportunity to open our hearts and our minds to experience your will and your way in our lives. We expect in this moment to be blessed. And we allow those blessings to flow through us right here and right now. We claim this in the name and in the nature of the living Christ. Amen. When the cold winds start to blow And they beat up on your door Every night will have its dawn So hold this thought as you surrounds me God's love enfolds me God's power protects me the presence of God watches over me wherever I Good morning. Today our daily word is Mother's Blessings. And our affirmation today is I honor all mothers and am grateful for their love. I bless my mother and am grateful to her for the gift of nurturing love. Whether my mother is still with me or has passed on, her love still lives in my heart and her wisdom continues to inspire me. I am grateful for the many ways my mother has blessed me. I also feel deep appreciation and tender affection for all those who have blessed me with the selfless gift of motherly love. I would not be who I am without them. Though through the living example of the mothers in my life, I pass along the blessings of a mother's care and devotion as I embrace opportunities to share an affirming thought, an encouraging word, a smile, or a simple act of kindness. 
I honor my mother and all mothers as I share the love of God that never fails. From Proverbs, she opens her mouth with wisdom and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. Good morning. Today is Mother's Day. And as I was preparing for the meditation, I was all over the map on how to present this and how to invite you to meditate with me. Meditation is not a immediate action. It's something we have to prepare for. Just as Jody prepares and warms up before his, his concerts, uh, an athlete warms up before they go and do the 50 mile run or the five mile run, whatever they're doing. We, as far as meditation go, have to prepare. One of the things we want to do is breathe, take in a cleansing breath, be aware of our surroundings. Meditation is not emptying your mind. Meditation is focusing. Consider yourself at a party. You walk in the front door and there is chatter going on all over the place. This one's talking about the kids, this one's talking about work. As you walk through the chatter, you hear all the chatter, all the chatter. And then you go up to a friend or you go up to the host and all the chatter kind of goes in the background and you can focus on your conversation with your host. That's what we're doing with meditation. I invite you right now to take a deep, deep breath. Take in. Hold and release. Feel the air going into your lungs. Feel the love and the energy and excitement of the world, of this world that we're in, this living, breathing world. We take it in and we let it out. And as we release, we're releasing love, joy, calmness, connection. As this is Mother's Day, I invite you to please sit comfortably in your chair. The focus of a mother is nurturing. Nurturing is not gender specific. gender specific. Think back in your life. Who was there to nurture, to help you? When you skinned your knee, you went running home. Who was there to make it all better? Who kissed the boo-boo and made it go away? Connect with that love, that thought, whether it was your mother, your grandmother, your father, an uncle, a teacher, a pastor, a friend, the person that you love that gave you the nurturing. Hold on to that beautiful memory. Feel it. Feel the enjoyment, the love, the energy, the warmth of how you felt when it was bestowed on you, that this person really loves me. They nurture me. They take care of me. Embrace that thought. Focus on that thought. Allow the music 
to envelop you, to surround you, so that it's you and the wonderful, beautiful, loving, nurturing thought that you are experiencing. Listen, experience. This is a beautiful time. These are beautiful thoughts. You can bring these thoughts back whenever you feel harried or not energized. Think of this wonderful, beautiful memory. Take in a deep breath. Feel the air expanding your lungs. Breathe out. As you breathe out, you're breathing out calm, love, energy, and the nurturing emotions that you hold dear. Breathe in. Feel the energizing light, the warmth, the excitement. This feeling will stay with you and you'll pass it on, whether it's through a phone call, a Zoom conversation, a wave when you're in your car to somebody outside the car. We are social distancing, but we are still connected. And this beautiful love that we have is being shared. Take another deep breath. Come back to the awareness of where you are, the here and now. The conversations in the background can now come up. You can hear, start hearing some more about Mary Sue and Johnny, and you can hear all of them. But you know how to focus. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. Thank you all for the loving nature and nurturing that you share with your family, your friends our church community, and the world. Namaste. Will you join me in prayer? I thank you, Mother, Father, God, for your presence that is here with us right here and now. And I thank you for allowing me to be an instrument of your truth, that the words that I speak speak to hearts and to minds, and that we are all open and receptive to your message. I thank you for the growth that is coming out of this message and this experience for all of us. We are so grateful for this time in our lives. And so it is. Amen. So this morning, I'd like to sh we, uh, Patricia and I would like to share with you a moment of levity in regards to our mothers. You see, our mothers have taught us a lot of lessons in our lives, and we'd like to uh, share uh, some insight, perhaps, of how our mothers have shared um, these lessons with us. 
So to begin with, my mother taught me about religion. You better pray that that mark comes out of the carpet. My mother taught me about time travel. If you don't straighten up, I'm going to kick you right into the next week. My mother taught me about foresight. Make sure you wear clean underwear, just in case of an accident. My mother taught me irony. Keep crying, and I'll give you something to cry about. My mother taught me about contortionism. Will you look at the dirt on the back of your neck? My mother taught me about weather. This room of yours looks like a tornado went through it. My mother taught me about envy. There are millions of less fortunate children in the world wishing they had wonderful parents like you do. My mother taught me about anticipation. Just wait till you get home. My mother taught me about receiving. You're going to get it when you get home. My mother taught me about humor. When the lawnmower cuts off your toes, don't come running to me. My mother taught me about wisdom. When you get to be my age, you'll understand. And my mother taught me about justice. One day you'll have children just like you, and I hope they turn out just like you. My mother taught me about peer pressure. What if they jumped off the bridge? Would you jump off after them? And my mother taught me about God. Don't make me come down there. Thank you, Patricia. So happy Mother's Day. So have you ever had um, or expressed this saying to yourself or out loud? That's the way I feel. I just can't help it. Or maybe it's been expressed the other way around. I can't help it. That's the way I feel. You know, feelings are visceral, and they come from a deep inward source. And feelings are the antithesis, pretty much, of, of our intellectual side. Now, in truth, in the, as a true student, we teach a lot about our thoughts. We teach that thoughts are things. And Napoleon Hill said that thoughts are things, and their scope of operation is the world itself. We know that to be true. We know that our thoughts are things and that they really do operate the world around us. Unity's adage is, Thoughts held in mind produce after their kind. The things that we hold in our, in our, our, in our thought forms come out as uh, manifestations. The Buddha said, thoughts are everything. What you think, you become. And Ernest, Ernest Holmes said, change your thinking and you change your life. You see, we're born separate genders male and female. But within each male and each female is encompassed a masculine and feminine side. When we think about the masculine, we think about hunters and warriors. The masculine is about the thinking nature, the intellect. The masculine side is our left side of the brain. It focuses on science and math and logic. And for the most part, it's very visible what we see. The feminine side, though, our feminine attributes, we're nurturers, we're cultivators, we're protectors. It is, it is manifested through our feeling nature. It comes through the right side of our brain, the side of our brain that emphasizes art and creativity. It has a lot to do with the invisible. So in this analogy, Masculine, our masculine side is our thinking nature. Our feminine side is our feeling nature. And there's a constant interplay between the cognitive processes, the masculine side, the thinking ability, and the affective processes, our feeling nature, our, the, the feminine pieces of that. There's an, always an interplay between our thinking and feeling natures. Our thinking drives our emotions. 
Did you ever think about that? Our thinking drives our emotions, and yet our emotions drive our life. So in essence, emotions are driving our bus. And I know that you probably have experienced this. I will make the uh, analogy for myself. I know that I have experienced this, that while I have uh, a thinking nature, my life is pretty much driven by the emotional side. So thinking drives our life, but drives it through our emotions. Can you relate to this? We feel the power and presence, which brings us into health and prosperity. It's a feeling. It's not so much about we're thinking power and presence. We feel power and presence. And that feeling brings us into health and prosperity. We find our power in our emotions. And that is... Uh, the fundamental emotions that, that drive us. Those fundamental emotions that I'm talking about are, are faith and love and hope and joy, forgiveness, compassion and awe. Those are those divine emotions that we get to experience and they drive then the processes in our life like imagination, order, release, and intelligence. Both are important, our thinking, our thinking self and our feeling self, our thinking nature and our feeling nature. But the suggestive power in this is in our feeling nature. Now, unlike other man, am, mammals, we direct our life through our thinking and feeling nature. Our thinking drives our emotions and our emotions drive our life. Now, when you think about that, when our emotions are positive, we flourish, we grow, we're creative, we're receptive. When our emotions are negative, we flounder. We find ourselves in a place of lack or disease or fear. Our thoughts drive our emotions and our emotions bring power to our thoughts. I'm going to repeat that. Our thoughts drive our emotions, and our emotions bring power to our thoughts. It's like the rocket fuel. We're attracted then to people who bring out positive emotions. And unity's full of them. That's what I, I've always loved about unity. Unity attracts people who bring out positive emotions. And when we bring out positive emotions, we are affirming each other. We are expressing divine mind. We are expressing love. When we take cognitive processes, when we take these thoughts and release them into positive emotions, that power, that drives us in a positive direction. And those, those are divine ideas. When we take thoughts, put in behind that, those po positive emotions, and put it in a direction, that positive direction, those are our divine ideas. Now, it's been suggested that spirituality may be rooted in spiritual texts and true teachings. But our spiritual experience is rooted in our limbic system, that set of structures in the brain that deal with our emotions and memories. It's, that, it's what regulates our autonomic and, and doctrine systems through our emotions. I've often said that, you know, in some aspects, our spirituality may be a chemical response. It may be a, a chemical experience because the spir our spirituality, the positivity of our spirituality, the love of our spirituality brings forth a chemical reaction in our bodies. So we are seeking positive emotions and social connection. And in that, we're nurtured and create from emotions manifest into form. Now, that might sound a little confusing, and I apologize for that. But what we are is we're bringing this positive self, and we're taking it into, we're seeking our, our, uh, our social connections, uh, the, our relationships. And in that, we seek to be nurtured, and we create from that um, positive emotions, and that manifests into form. 
It is what we think, what we feel, then manifest. And so love in itself, the word love, the action of love, may be the shortest definition of spirituality that we have. Now I'm thinking of Myrtle Fillmore in this because um, Myrtle Fillmore, the co-founder of Unity, began her, in earnest her spiritual journey at a talk given by Dr. W.E.B. E. Weeks. Dr. Weeks made this comment, and this stuck with, with Myrtle to her core. He said, I am a child of God. I do not inherit sickness. You see, Myrtle had had a life of sickness. She had had tuberculosis at the time, and she was always seeking a cure and ans asking the questions, why is this happening? And you know, I'm, I'm reminded in Mark 8, where Jesus says, we have ears but cannot hear. And sometimes we're in those places where we have the ears but we cannot hear. We're not, we're not ready for it. Or what we hear are just words, but we don't get the feeling. And in that moment, Myrtle caught the feeling nature. It went to her heart. And in that, she, she got it. She got what she had to do. And that piece drove her into seclusion. She did some social distancing, you might say. It was a time of focused prayer, of, of training and expanding her thinking and feeling nature. And she spent that time loving every part of her body, seeking forgiveness for taking it for granted, and praising, praising, claiming its full function. Also during that time, she sat with Jesus Christ, sharing her love and asking him asking the Christ to guide her, to guide through her. And she was always seeking, always remembering God's presence and power. You see, we all have these experiences of error, error thinking. It's, it's part of the human experience. We all go through times where we have moments of anger or grief or abandonment and betrayal fear, jealousy, lack, and greed. Jesus felt many of these emotions himself. And the important piece in this is not so much having the emotions because we're going to have the emotions. The important piece is not staying there, is knowing that there is a way out, that that is a human experience and we are a spiritual being. So we create and we have tools to come out of that. It's also understanding that we have constructive and destructive thoughts, constructive and destructive actions, constructive and destructive emotions, and that we have the power and presence of God that is constant, everywhere present and alive and active, and we can change our emotional state. But it takes every aspect of our spiritual awareness. It takes practice. So how do we change our feelings? Well, we change our feelings that we primarily change the emotions behind it. We primarily change the thoughts behind the feelings. I've shared with you before uh, my personal experience with my first partner, who I have uh, lovingly dubbed him as Mr. Christmas. You see, Christmas was always very important in my life. My mom made a point of making Christmas special in our family, and subsequently then the friends in my life um, made Christmas important, and Mr. Christmas, my, my first love, he made Christmas extremely special. And Christmas with him was ultra special because there was lots of laughter and warmth and gifts and decorations and food and big celebration. And they were the happiest memories of my life. And I cherish them so much. But when Mr. Christmas, when my first partner made his transition, those circumstances changed and there was no more big celebrations. And I went through years and especially at Christmas time, years of extreme sadness and depression and feeling lost. And even though 
I was out there trying to make, find meaning of all this. I was always comparing what I was experiencing now to what I had, and nothing, nothing could compare to it. But in time, and they say time heals all wounds, and, and that may be if, if you want it to, if you allow it to. But in time, for me, spiritual maturity caught up with me. And then there was this awareness. My awareness started to grow about those Christmases and about my relationship with him. And, And what changed from just being sad and depressed about Christmas was being, finding absolute gratitude for those Christmases having gratitude for experiencing such a precious, joyful, uplifting, transformational experience year after year. I started finding and recognizing the good that was around me in Christmas. I started taking care of myself at Christmas by making sure that I had plans and people to celebrate with. And knowing that it wasn't going to be the same, still putting myself into it. And I started understanding what was important to me in this, and that is I love to celebrate. I love to celebrate. That's why Sunday mornings are so important to me and why I have so much joy being here celebrating spirit with you and why I love fellowship and why I love our dinners and our partings and our ability to connect and socialize. And I'm holding that vision. I'm holding that vision for that to return. And I started in that time allowing the feelings to arise and acknowledge that I was going to have feelings, acknowledge that there was some sadness and it was going to come and to go, but it was okay because it was precious. I started to create a new context. And that's how the feelings began to change for me that I wasn't so emotionally tied to being depressed and being sad about Christmas anymore. I was instead knowing that there's possibility, knowing that I can't go back, but that there's possibility. And in that possibility is much joy to be expected, much joy to be experienced. However, you know, sometimes we create an ideal. Of, of what we think something should be and how it should be. And then we experience our ideal, but it doesn't somehow match the idea. And there's those feelings of disappointment. And we begin to allow a new idea or meaning to emerge. And then we begin to have new feelings. And so what I'm telling you in this is that sometimes it takes a little practice. That it doesn't maybe change overnight, although that is possible. It is possible. Miracles do happen when we allow those shifts to happen in our lives. They do happen. But it takes time and practice because the universe responds to our thinking and feeling nature. It outpictures this. This past week in the book study, one of the participants shared this phrase, and it was so powerful for me, so potent. She shared this. The universe rearranges itself to accommodate my outpicture of reality. I'm going to repeat that. The universe rearranges itself to accommodate my outpicture of reality. When I choose to see, think, feel, whatever I'm choosing to think, see, think, or feel on, and act upon, that is going to be my reality. So those years of sadness about Christmas, of depression about Christmas, I was choosing to see, think, and feel, and act upon the sadness and the depression. That was my reality. But when I started to change that reality, I had a different response to it. Uh, Actually, a more empowering, life-affirming response to it. You see, we, when we see, think, feel, and act upon lack or fear, our world manifests accordingly. And when we see, think, act upon conspiracy theory, the world is full of conspiracy. 
I was just thinking the other day of uh, early on in the uh, AIDS epidemic, um, there was a lot of misinformation out there. There was a lot of fear out there, a lot of conspiracy out there on both sides of, of the post. The people who, who were afraid of getting AIDS and, and ostracizing people with AIDS. And then there were people who had AIDS who had a conspiracy that Big Pharma was in on this and the government was in on this. It is amazing where the mind will go when it doesn't absolutely know everything. It goes to a place that in some way gives it a little element of control. And if that control is just confusion and adding to the confusion, it will go there too. So when we see, think, feel, and act upon love, health, prosperity, our world will manifest that as well. Feeling nature is our jet fuel. It propels us. I'm thinking of Mary Magdalene at the tomb, and, you know, she was mistaking, she had mistaken the risen Jesus Christ as the gardener, and she was grieving. Of course she was grieving. His body wasn't in the tomb. He was dead and gone and disappeared. Where was he? She loved him so much. She was grieving. She had this fear and lack. Where is he? And she says to the, who she thinks is the gardener, what have you done? And Jesus simply said, Mary. And her heart melted. Her feeling nature turned quickly inside. She was quickened to the Christ love. She identified and recognized him immediately. We live in unprecedented times. And there is no model of recovery. We are creating a model as we speak. We are taking steps and we're not sure where they're going to lead or how it's going to unfold. And the uncertainty among many is palpable. You know, it was even recently suggested that some of us may need to have social distancing up for up to two years. And that's unimaginable, isn't it? Because, you know, in our conversations, the ones that you and I have shared, we're making the best of it, and we're finding good, and, and we, share in, we share in these undimensional, unmentioned questions. We're asking these questions. How long will this last? Will I ever be able to be in the physical presence of my loved ones? Will I ever be able to hug them again? Is this how the rest of our life is going to be. Those questions come forward. And those are really honest, real questions. And those are honest and real feelings. Because behind that is all that uncertainty. And yet I'm stru struck by the story of Noah, who was on that ark for, I calculated a year and 10 days, but I could be wrong. But it was an unprecedented time for him too. But it was through his obedience. It was through his obedience to God that he and his family were spared. And they practiced their social distancing from the rest of the world. And when they were on dry land again, they began to prosper again. And I can guarantee this, probably, maybe. I imagine, I'll put it this way, I imagine that those moments for Noah of building that ark, of being in the midst of this uh, traumatic flood that wiped out everyone that they knew, I imagine there were many times that he thought, this isn't fun. I don't want to do this. This isn't what I signed up for. But in fact, he's been given this opportunity to grow, just as we have been given this opportunity to grow. We have been called here in this time and place by divine appointment. This is where we're supposed to be. This is what we are supposed to experience. 
And we can be the models in this. We are invited to reinvent, to reimagine a new understanding of connection, a new understanding of relationship, a new understanding of expressing love. And part of this is an inward process. We've been asked to bring forward in our feeling nature that power, that gift of faith. And I remind you, in Hebrews 11.1, 1, it says, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, for the conviction of things not seen. And so I am praying, I'm affirming, our highest good is manifesting. We learned recently in the book Divine Audacity that the qualities of faith is our conviction, our perception, and our expectancy. You see, our, again, our feeling nature is the rocket fuel to manifest. We take moments to moment steps to guide our feeling nature. And we do this. We do this because we have the desire and are growing in awareness. We do this because we are creating new meaning and demonstrations. And we do this through practice, our daily practices. And perhaps even our daily practices are growing. The presence of God is always available, but it awaits our choice. And on this Mother's Day, I celebrate the feeling nature that each of us experience, and I hold this gift in love and light. Our feeling nature, the, the gift of power, is ours to enhance our life experience. So the next time you find yourself with a feeling, and you can't help but think, I can't help how I feel, know that that state is erroneous. That is error thinking. You have much more power than that small thought. You have the power of love, joy, forgiveness, compassion, hope, and awe within you. You are a blessing. Happy Mother's Day. Would you join me in prayer? Oh, we thank you, Mother, Father, God. We thank you for your power and your presence in us. We claim it here and now. We claim your joyful, awe-filled feelings and emotions in our life. We thank you for that rocket fuel that propels our thoughts into manifestation. We claim this and give you all the glory. Amen. frustration and doubt my soul remembers your grace when the herd is searing like a desert still I never go
sheltered all the while, whether at war or at peace, awake or asleep, whether I'm walking the streets or diving the ocean deep, whether it's winter or spring, whether I cry. not do what must be done. My soul remembers your mercy, blessing the deepest doubt I harbor with the heat of the sun, kiss of the sun, whether I Awake or asleep, whether I'm walking the streets or diving the ocean deep, whether it's winter or spring, whether I cry or sing, oh, my soul remains.
Thank you, Jody. Beautiful, very beautiful. I'd like to share a few announcements with you. Um, as you know, prayer is the cornerstone of the unity movement, and prayer is very important to us. And we invite you, if you have a prayer concern or when you have a prayer concern, to call Silent Unity 365 days of the year. Their number is 1-800-NOW-PRAY. You can also call our church office because we have a staff of very devoted uh, prayer chaplains. And when you call our church office, just let us know that you would like to have a prayer chaplain contact you, and they will do so at the earliest uh, possible opportunity. We are so thankful to you for your continued financial support, and we want to encourage you to continue to do that. We need your support. Um, you can do that in three different ways right now. Uh, you can send a check to our church office, and the, the address is listed there on the screen. You can also go to our website and hit the Donate button, and that is a very safe, secure, and easy way uh, to donate to our church. And then the third opportunity is through credit card donations. And just call the church, and we will take down your credit card information and process that directly. We thank you for supporting us financially. It is, it is important to us that uh, we get to continue on in this ministry, and we hope that it's important to you too. Another way that you can continue supporting us is passing this information on to other people, passing our daily blessings, our services. Hit the forward button and pass it to your family and friends, people who you think might need a bit of a spiritual uplift right now. We're here for them. And you can also be connected to our newsletter. You just simply call our church office and we will take your email address and you will be on that list. You will receive the weekly newsletter as well as our daily video blast that goes out digitally. Thank you for being a part of us. We um, have several programs that are coming up. One of them being, uh, we have um, our Chaplain's Corner every Wednesday on Zoom at one o'clock. It is an opportunity for you to connect with chaplains. We take each prayer request that comes in. You have this eye-to-eye -eye contact via Zoom, and you can, the chaplain will pray with you for your prayer concern. Um, again, Wednesdays at one o'clock on Zoom, all you need to do is contact the office um, with your email address and we will register you to, to, to have access to that. Also, every Sunday at 10 o'clock, we're doing our Sunday morning gathering. It's a Zoom connection. And then again, on uh, Fridays at noon, we are doing our book study on Lessons in Truth, a seminal book in, in New Thought and really wonderful stuff. I, it's, I think my fifth time studying the book and each time I study it, I go deeper and in different directions and I'm so thankful for that truth. So we are here and there's one more thing. If you don't know what Zoom is and if you cannot access Zoom or don't think you can access Zoom, call our office. We'll, we'll have someone walk you through it and see if it's possible because we want everyone, everyone, to be connected to us at the most possible way that they can be. Thank you. We're going to have a time now of singing the peace song and then reciting together the prayer for protection. me 
let this be the moment now with every step i take let this be my joyous vow to take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally let there be peace on earth and let it be Will you please join me in the prayer for protection? The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Amen. We wish you a very good week. We are so grateful that you were here to join us. We send you our love. We miss your physical presence, but feel and experience the love that you are giving to us. Thank you so much for that. You have a wonderful week. God bless you.